Stevie Lane. 18. Jack Danby. Nice liar. 36. Yeah, he's right, yeah. 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 John Park. 36. 20. 20 John. Yeah. 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 yeah, we'll get down there. Right, so I'm here today at Westwood Lakes on the open match. Um, there's 26 of us, I believe. Uh, so it's pretty much peg two miss one all the way around the lake. Uh, I've drawn peg 36 today, fairly fairly average area. Uh, there's definitely a lot of fish moving, but I have, I've had a little bit of a plumb around and it is quite shallow, so there isn't really much room for them to be active and not showing. Um, main plan of attack today is mainly going to be in the shallow water across and then a metre off the bank, it's a similar sort of depth. Uh, so if they are a little bit cagey, I'll just come away from that bank and you usually manage to pick a few up there. Um, it will mainly be ground bait or micros across with corn or maggots as a hook bait, I believe. Um, and then hopefully, um, with how active the fish seem to be, we might catch a few in the edge late as well. Um, I reckon it'll be probably 130, 140 pounds today to win the match. Uh, so let's see how it goes. So just plumbing up my last line, um, just a nice simple top kit line. I'll probably start on either this or a five metre line just to see how things are going down the lake. Uh, also in the last few weeks it has been uh, quite noticeable really that the people that have gone across last have seemed to have a larger size fish uh, when they've done so. So hopefully by starting short I can get a few more carp to come into my swim across. Um, and push the smaller fish out a little bit because there is quite a few stockies in this lake now. So as long as I can consistently catch at five metres and no one's running away, I'll just uh, have a good half an hour, 45 minutes short and just work my way in from there. Alright, so on pot choice, um, I always like to start off as small as I can for my rigs across here. Um, the fish are very active and they come in your peg and they're kicking the bait around so small little piles just to bring enough just enough bait to sort of attract one at a time ideally um, it's definitely the way forward because um, they, they just come in your peg they can swirl everywhere and cause more trouble than it's worth and you end up sort of chasing tails a lot of the time or foul looking fish so uh, small amounts of bait and then you can always build up into bigger pots going forward. So I'll start off on a 4mm expander. Alright, and it's the all in now. So starting off on a 4mm expander, just going to start at 5 metres. Um, since I put the nets in, there seem, seem to have been no movements close in, all the way down the bank. Uh, so I'll start at 5 metres, just enough away. I think um, we'll see where we go from there. just sprinkling about 30 micros 
and lower the ribbons gently over the top. I can see already a fair few people have gone straight across and um, I can use this as a bit of a guide really. Um, I can see one person is into a fish but it's early days, no need to panic. And let's fish on. Just tap the remaining pellets in. Often find on this line as well, out of the F1s, they seem to be the larger ones. Start. F1 about two pounds. It's a really tiny bite, so really worth dotting the float down. So I'm using a Dynamite 4mm Pro Expander on the hook. Um, I like to pump these in just water, but then pour all the water straight off and just replace it with the Amino pellet soak. Um, with the pellet soaks being slightly thicker than water, it just it's enough for it to soak into the pellet, but um, it really keeps the pellets nice and tough and really keeps them quite uh, small so they don't expand too much. It's just easier to keep them on the hook then. Particularly important at places like Westwood where you get quite a lot of liners. So you don't, the last thing you need is your expanders falling off the hook. And then I also uh, match this to my micro pellets as well. I use the amino pellet soak on them as well here. And we're in again. So looking down the bank, no one really has seemed to have started too well across. Um, I've seen a couple of people have one fish, but I've now got two, two nice fish. This one's a carp, probably three and a half, four pound. Uh, so, yeah, definitely a good call starting short. And it came off in the net as well. Once again, 30 or 40 micros in the pot. Uh, now that I've got a few fish coming into the peg, I'll sort of hold back on the feed even more so, just sprinkling in sort of 15, 20 micros, trying to trigger that one bite, and just to get the bite a bit quicker. If you feed too many micros, then they'll just get a bit preoccupied on them, so it's really about starving them onto the hook here. It's clear there's enough fish in the lake, you don't need to pull them in from too far away. So just being quite negative with it can often work really well. So just sprinkle 15 micros thereabouts. Lift above and lower it back in over the top of the micros.
and fish on. Just tap a few micros in as I didn't really feed many that time. <laughs> as you can see there it's tried to go under a platform but due to the nets being pegged back it sort of trapped it it couldn't get under there and it's turned away And another one's just swirled out on the peg. It's not really carrying on very well on this line now. I've had my first three initial fish, um, but I may end up having to come off the line and uh, heading across to the far bank a little bit earlier than planned. Oh. It can really be quite frustrating here. Um, you'll have a lot of fish in your peg but often they're just sat above your feed. They've been brought into the peg by the feed, but then they're not really wanting to, to eat. Just lowering it back in. See Paul's starting to, to get an odd fish now. It looks like he's fishing at 13 metres, metre and a half off the far bank. Um, I'll keep an eye on this because once Paul gets there, he can be hard to catch. Um, but other than that, there's not really a huge, huge amount happening down the lake. Um, say probably a few people with two fish. Uh, so it's been quite a slow start by Westwood standards. And I foul up to fish there, so I think I'm going to have to move lines. Um, clearly not worked up in the feed. So I'm a, I'll work my way out across the far bank now. I'll, I'll go on to sort of a 13 metre line. Um, Tapping a few pellets there, see, see where we can go. Hopefully I can get a good arrow or so on this before going right across.
maybe some line there. Ah, that's cable. Straight away there's activity in the peg. My rig being pushed out of position, so just lifted it, dropped it back in right over the feed. And some bad netting. There we go. And I think I need to leave this line for a bit now. Um, just clear issues with just foul hookers. The best possibility of avoiding foul lockers is if I go across. Um, so I think I'll fish across against the bank slightly to the left, where it's sort of very similar depth to where I've been fishing already. Um, see if that improves things. If I still suffer from foul lockers, I can go right into the mud. Um, so for now, just fish against the bank. See what see what happens there because like I say I can see a lot of people foul looking fish now and it's just one of them days. Um, often they can be a bit funny when there's not too much of a ripple on the water here. Because here in Boston there's no hills from the hills. Very 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 windy place. They just shut off completely when there's no wind. And of a nice carp. Oh, 
Right, so it's just gone a bit funny across for me. Um, I had a fish that snagged me up and I was fighting it through a bit of the bank um, and it got stuck there for quite a while. Uh, so after that, I've sort of had one more and then it's gone really, really tricky on me. So I'm just now plumbing up, just trying to find another area where I can possibly get a run of fish. quite difficult with the overhanging far bank. I'm really wanting to get tight to bank, but it's also quite important to find the right depth. No, it can't go there. So it's fairly flat, just to the edge of this black matting. There we go, look, once again, over, overhanging where it doesn't appear to, like it is, but it's quite tricky to see at times. So it's very up and down in the little mud hole. feel like you found somewhere and then <laughs> it's quite typical there's just something on the bottom where bits of bank have fell in and grass growing and just little snags which you want to stay clear of so if you can find find a spot seems fairly clear just restart on it oh bumped a fish there I think this is going to be my best option going on the edge of just on the edge here Need to add another another inch or so onto my float, and then we'll give it a go there. I've added just over an inch on. Let's just see. I believe it's about right now. Get nice and tight. Yeah, so I've just got the body of the float showing. And yeah, that's about perfect to me. Just gives a little bit of wiggle room. Possibly need ever so slightly more a little bit of wiggle room for the, for the fish to manoeuvre the bait uh, without it looking too sort of artificial Again, they're trying to get underneath the platform, but it's uh, we've put in all the nets under there, there's not really any space for them to get through. It's another nice little carp. Nice clean bite again there. So 
it's really showing like this uh, this quick switch is proven to pay off so we've switched lines in front of the uh, in front of the meshing and at first it seemed to be great to be honest so went straight in had two quick fish and um, no line bites and then uh, since then they started to sort of come into a peg really positive bites but foul up so uh, I think it was just literally one fish coming in at a time but they're just sort of too aggressive coming in onto the feed and um, so as I was using maggots uh, I've, I've switched to corn where it's a bit heavier uh, just trying to settle it down a bit and stop them from pushing it around so much There we go, uh, just a bit of a change, a couple of liners, but um, I've then hooked into a fish and it appears to be in the mouth. Uh, so just that bit of a heavier bait where it's not getting washed around in the peg. And I believe this one's now in the mouth, so just on a single piece of XL corn. And yeah, this one's in the mouth this time. So just settling them down onto the bottom, keep them a bait nice and still. I mean, that's why I'm using a three inch hook length, but with the maggots, they'll still obviously go within a three inch circle, uh, wafted around from your bulk. That was hooked perfectly in the mouth, that one. So we'll just go straight back in with another piece of corn. Nice little nugget of ground bait again. This is the first one on uh, over the milled expander and micros mix. Um, the fish definitely don't seem seem to be as a, as quick to come in over it, um, which may be a bit of a positive. Hopefully, we can calm them down a bit and get them just to come in one at a time and get them in the mouth. Yeah, that one's in the mouth.
Right, so we're into the dying stages of the match now. Um, to be honest, it's, it's faded away throughout the day. Um, the fish are now in the edges, um, but there really isn't many ways to catch them. Uh, they're just swirling at any bait that's going in. 
um, shy enough from the pole as soon as it goes in. So I'm just uh, alternating edges, just trying different ways of feeding and switching between micros and ground bait, uh, just to try and trick one off because they sort of get a little bit confident and then every now and again you can you can pick one off when you haven't fed it for a little while by switching to the other margin. Uh, so I'm just trying to keep the fish within the swim, but just trying to catch them at different times between feeds. And throughout the day they've been very funny. I mean, I most probably should have set up to fish two or three lines at a time and just bounce between them, catching two fish off each. And that would have been the way to go today, but it's not usually the case here. Obviously everything doesn't always go to plan. Yeah, I can't see all the lake, but the anglers I can see have all been swapping and changing between different methods because nothing's really worked. And as I say, it's quite unusual here for Westwood. You normally sort of stick to two or three lines and uh, have some good runs on them. With the weather being so up and down over the last few days, that's probably not helped the situation. Obviously, yeah, still in early spring. Another indication on the float there. <laughs> and that's the end. So today things haven't really gone to plan. Um, I've had a few fish on everything I've set up, but um, not really a good solid run of fish. Um, which is not normally the way here. We normally have a, a good sort of hour or so on a method and then you may have to change, but it's just been a day where it's been constant changes, having to constantly change your feet to try and get a bite and constantly moving lines or having issues with foul hookers. So it's been quite a frustrating day. Um, I've ended up with 21 fish. And like I say, they came from shallow water and deep water and shallow over my deep water line. But I think I'll be about midway with that. I think everyone's caught a few fish. Um, it'll be interesting to see if there's been bigger weights on the other side where I can't see. Um, and I've seen Paul catch the odd fish, but no real big bursts of fish. So I'd probably guess someone will have around £100. Um, I'd say I've probably got 50 to £60. But it's been a good day's fishing. Right, let's get the gear away. Let's get a picture of this one. Right, so uh, that's it folks. Uh, tricky day, but I've managed to get a few on a lot of different lines. I've had 86 pound, sorry, 84 pound. Um, and considering dry nets both sides of me where they've not weighed, uh, it's really been a bit of a struggle, so I've just managed to tick along getting a few bites. Yes, I foul up to a lot of fish, but just by keep switching what what feed and how I'm feeding, 
I've managed to keep in touch with the fish a little bit longer than some other anglers. Um, so hopefully that's uh, enough to see me win this end of the lake. I know that down there there's been some hundred, uh, low hundred pounds and a couple of nineties, but you can only compete in the area you are, unfortunately. Um, I've had a fair few fish across. It's been quite clear they've been in shallow water. Um, as soon as you've gone into any deeper water, they've just not gone down at all. Um, so yeah, nice days fishing, 84 pound in lovely surroundings and what more can we ask for?